Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. You know, it's cool we got all our stuff sorted right when we're in time to reset the server. Uh, yeah, I like it. And let's <laughs> get this iron farm set up just in time to reset the server. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, I know you've been... Oh, oh, how the hell did this guy spawn? Hey. Jerk. Jerk face. I'm not even going to use my new shield on you. It's not worth it. I haven't had a shield in so long. Um, I don't know if you've, uh, you've been, I know you've been busy traveling and stuff, so you probably haven't listened to any of the podcasts. Um, have you heard any of the podcasts? Uh, not yet. Um, but this week we announced the plans, the plans I talked to you about. Wait, wait, we got, we got zombies. We got lots of zombies. Holy crap. We got lots of zombies. We need to, we need to trap them. I don't know how to trap this many zombies. Oh my freaking God. Oh my what fucking is, God. <laughs> what is happening? Oh, it's uh it's a horde <laughs> for the villagers. It's a villager horde. Well, um, we need to trap one. <laughs> yeah, just uh, maybe maybe we should kill most of them. I was like, look, a baby, we should kill this guy. Look, look, a couple more zombies, we should kill them. Look, 35 zombies. <laughs> Holy crap. Now they just they just sink, I guess that makes it easy. Well, they will become a drowned. Oh god. Uh, I want to keep some of them alive. Oh, that iron golem's down there. Is he gonna kill him? Well, we got two over here in this boat. You got you got him in a boat. Oh, good, good, good. Because yeah, iron golem guy's gonna. Kill there's you. still plenty though. Don't worry. Yeah. My but, God, there's so but, many up well, there. We need to get rid of the iron golem. Oh yeah, okay. that's true. Otherwise, he's just gonna kill them all, right? Right. Um. They hit pretty hard, these these iron golems, right? Yeah, yeah. You don't want to attack the iron golem. Or you want to just, like, dig him a hole. Like, yeah, put him in a hole if you can, and then uh, we'll try to lure a zombie back in there. And then dig a hole around <laughs> said, zo said zombies so that the iron golem man doesn't go after him. Damn it. Started digging a hole and he moved. Like, how bad does he hit? Can I kill him with a bow, maybe? Probably, but as long as you can't get out. Oh, huh. He looks damaged now. That's pretty cool. Yeah, he does. That's interesting. He did. Okay. Oh, no. They're drowning. Well, that one guy's down. No, it's, he's right. fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. I did hit him once, though, so he is we damaged. Just, so. This time, when you lure him in, if we just stand on both sides of this thing instead of dealing with those pressure plates... Like I get one door, you get the other. It should uh -huh. happen. Okay. Um, you ready? I'm ready. Like the doors are both open. I just need to. He needs to come down here. Come, come. Oh, this idiot is drowning. That's, come, come. That's what I was worried about. Do we need to build him a staircase? He's figuring it out. Here he is. He got it. Here he is. Ouch. If you go through one side, I'll like lure him in here. Did that not work? Damn it. No, it didn't. Because you were like, your no, body yeah, was in I the door when I went it. to hit it. All right. Don't, oh, oh, God, don't, don't hit him too much because I hit him outside with a sword once. I just hit him with a stone block. Uh, what is the best way to do this? I, that's not going to work. <laughs> I don't really yeah. actually know. Uh, Damn see, it! That's not gonna. I wonder if you have to hit him back when I run through. There we go. go. Got him. Okay. So name tag, name tag him. Boom. He's name tagged, and now we just take away the floor. Besides, we do it quick there. before the column spawns. Oh yeah, that's true. I wonder if we have to go more than two down. Like, what's this golem's range? Like, through the, uh, in the, the vertical axis. Yeah, he seems pretty tall. Yeah, it was, uh, it was pretty intense that he got to him where he's at. Um, while we're doing this, so what I was going to say was, uh, we made the announcement on the, on the... Should do something like... No, the golem can't spawn there, never mind. <laughs> I was like, the golem could spawn, like, right on that edge. <laughs> probably cannot uh you might be able to spawn up on the ceiling though i don't know how this works put half slabs on top of the ceiling. there you yeah, go there you go. Doing. 
Um, anyways, made the announcement that uh, the Patreon um, twenty five dollar tier for the new whenever the server resets will be the uh, the ability to join the server, the Minecraft server. Um, I think that'll be really good for us. Yeah, I, um, think, I think people will enjoy it too. I hope. Yeah, I, I hope people enjoy it. Um, but I think like it'll give us a lot, a lot of people on the server and like things to like go and do and see. Um, so even if like no one's making YouTube videos, um, plus people can come watch us record live. They won't be able to hear us, but I was thinking maybe we should start a uh, live streaming. Um, we talked about it before. Yeah, we've definitely maybe... talked about it before. I'm, I'm game to switch to a live streaming format versus a recording format. I mean, we can, we still, can still record. Yeah, we can still yeah. release them on YouTube and stuff. We just, you know, the standard format being live streaming versus anything mm -hmm. else. With that recent change uh, with broadband, there's no point in me recording anything but yeah, Minecraft, so I swear. I will, I will tell you, I'm not sure what numbers you were looking at. My numbers were a little bit, and I'm talking like minuscule, like a few dollars, higher than they'd been in the past. Really? But my numbers are so low anyway, I'm not sure that makes a difference. Like, I'm not sure that matters. Oh, right. right. You were talking about after, uh, I forgot that after the last time we recorded, we talked about the monetization and yeah. my numbers. Super low. So I brought that up in my Discord and the people that schedule my videos looked at it too. And they, they looked hurt harder than I had. I just, because we were, we were looking for where to see the copyright stuff, which someone found that for me too. If you still don't know where that's at, I can show you how to get to that. Yeah, now. I would like to see that. But right now, let's do it right now. Let me just share my screen. <laughs> it's it's it. Right now. Uh, are you serious? No. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, if people but, uh, really want to know how much I make, I am more than happy to show them because they will be sorely disappointed. But <laughs> right. Well, I mean, that's what I was basically looking at. Was I was like, well, I'm down to two hundred dollars a month now. Um, but it looks like whenever broadband switched over, it it fucked the whole uh, system in terms of uh, keeping track of statistics. So that was just like the last like two weeks or something. Like how my, my like, is still it, it's all just gone. Yeah. Yeah. All my statistics for the last like eight years are gone, even though they were there previously. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. It's kind of shitty. Honestly, like what if I wanted to look at 2014 or 2015 or whatever? Because you're still housed under the same company like that. That didn't right. change. Right. I mean, it probably the same thing probably happened to you too. If you go look, I have not looked at my history. <laughs> God, no. well, yeah, that's the thing. Like, it's nothing I really look at. But if I ever wanted to, I guess I'm fucked now. Huh. Yeah, that's just weird to know because that's strange. Yeah, I wish that was something they had. Because you could like export like a CVS format. CVS, CSV, yeah, CSV. CSV. Uh, <laughs> um. But if they had told me, I would have. Yeah, I didn't realize that that would go away. Like, it doesn't make sense that it would go away. Like, in general, that just seems like it should be there. Like, there's no reason for it not to be. Uh, we'll put some torches. I'm trying to, like figure out how to build this thing as well because uh, I don't know golems are three tall yes okay. so where are they going to spawn they should spawn anywhere around this zombie block and everything that the uh, the buffer sent was like a, it was a nine by nine and the zombie in the middle why are so, they not spawning right now I don't no. Did we check Actually, all the it, villagers in there? It might be. Um, I can see two of them. I can't see this one because the spot. Um, it might be because the zombie's still aggroed on you. We might need to run away from here for a minute. Okay. Well, that might actually give us some time to <laughs> to build the things that should be built. Oh, good God. Fucking wall of charcoal. On the or grass. Uh, yeah, he's still there. Okay. But yeah, we, oh, so we know that the this configuration spawns them, right? So that's not a big issue. It's just uh, spawn zombie hordes too, apparently. <laughs> which was helpful in this case. Yeah, it was the, the zombie horde gods. Can uh, can he? He's three by one or three by two. 
I don't know. Three by two, I think. Three by two, so I need to go one more then. Yeah, I don't know if he's three by one or three by two. I'd have to go back and look at Buffer's drawing because he probably has it like laid out exactly the dimensions everything needs to be. But it's a very small killing chamber. It's just literally push them into a water chute here. They go one direction and you have like a, a lava knife that comes out and they burn. Like it's all it is. Right. It's nothing like crazy. Right. One direction. Didn't they break up? I think so. Didn't every band from like that generation break up? They might have got back together in the interim, but didn't they all break up? I don't know. Yeah, I'm did sure. did NSYNC and uh, Backstreet Boys both break up? I'm sure. I guess they did. did. I'm sure they did. It's just the way it is. So this, we'll have to put some plunger thingies down there. So I think one, two, three. What's some other bands from uh, Britain's that Britain. time? Uh, 98 Degrees. Oh, yeah. Uh, LFO. Uh, wait, the... Are those people that did, uh... Wait, LFO. Is that, um... LFO party is... rocking in the house tonight? No. That... LFO was a boy band, for sure. They oh, did, okay. did, um... Uh, Summer Girls was the big one that they were hit for. I, I'll be, I'll be honest. I'm, a, I was a fan of LFO. Um, like I like, I like their music. I think it sounded pretty cool. Uh, but it was, they were boy band for sure. Sure, they were not, you know, party music type things. Okay. Yeah, I'm thinking of someone else. Uh, what the fuck am I thinking of? Who's saying uh, party what rock? Is, what is the song that says, "I keep it up, home girl, don't you quit"? You know, the way you scream, it's the ultimate. Um, fuck, that's them, and I don't remember what it is. I have no idea. About it as she walked out on me and slammed the door. For they will laugh about it while she's always playing those games. God damn it. I've never heard the song, I don't think. Funny way to show me how she cares. Last night she did a donut on my lawn and drove <laughs> off with her fingers in her hair. I've, I've never heard these lyrics. Oh, God. Sometimes it's black, sometimes it's white, sometimes we're wrong, sometimes I'm right, sometimes we talk about it, but we figure it out. Maybe Then she just changed her mind, sometimes she's hot, sometimes I'm cold, but then my head... Oh, you know what? This is starting to sound familiar, actually. When I think about it, I'm so in love with... Every other time. <laughs> fucking, fucking, I fucking get to the chorus, like, forever. I'm so in love with her. Every other time. Yeah. Every other time was the name of that song. Jesus Christ. It took me forever to get there. <laughs> yeah, just, I know. I remember about you the know song the whole except song. for what the chorus was. Yeah. Apparently. Oh. Uh, I think we get lava and water. Yeah. I liked. Uh, so LFO. I liked Backstreet Boys and sync. Like I was never into like boy bands. And I know a lot of people are going to listen to this and be like, yeah, right. Yeah, right. Like, yeah. Obviously. Man who sings all uh, lyrics. LFO. I don't know why, but their music, I found it so catchy and I really enjoyed it. And I will still find myself uh, like if I'm if I start listening to the music, like on the nights and the weekends and I start watching music videos, an LFO song usually will come up into my rotation, whether it's because it gets suggested from like a different video that I was watching or whether I'm like, oh, shit, this music video is a good music video. Uh, every other time was actually a decent music video. Um, nothing uh. special. It was just decent. I remember, um, but I it definitely gets into my my rotation of listening every so often. And then LFO did a song with uh, they they was it was it every other time that they sang? They did LFO with Mope, which Mope was more of a, I was never into Mope, but Mo, Mope was more of a, like a rap type of you know. It wasn't ra straight up rap. It was more like light rap type stuff. I don't know even know where that is described at in right. the spectrum. But they did a, uh, uh, um, what do you call it? A group effort thing with LFO with one of their popular songs. And it was like, it was really funny. It was really good. You know who I uh, liked at the time, but I refused to admit it was uh, Hanson. So, Remember Hanson? I will say, Hanson, like, Mbop back in the day when they came out, like, good song. It got so overplayed, like, I didn't want anything to do with Mbop originally. Yeah. 
Hanson came out with some stuff later in their career. You know, they're still talking. together, actually. That's one oh, that's still they? together. I was yeah, say, yeah, They came out with some stuff later that started playing, like, probably 10 years after that. And I was like, man, this stuff is, like, this has got a good beat. Like, I really like this music, and I found out it was Hanson. And I was like, that's pretty impressive because they're, it was a complete 180 from their, you know, mbop. It wasn't just, like, right. throwing stuff together. So I can understand your statement unless it was mbop that you really, really it was mbop so it was that cd yeah <laughs> well, i remember I'll, uh, I'll, be, I'll be honest i have no idea what else is on that cd because i yeah i listened to mbop because it was on the radio all the time thought it was right. cool when it first came out because it was just like oh catchy beat like awesome and then it was like the 35th time i heard the song <laughs> right. Three days later i was like i'm done i can't do this anymore right yeah i remember uh <laughs> pick it up the girl I was dating at the time and it being in my back seat the CD and her being like you like Hanson and I was like no huh no that's my that's my little brother CD yeah he, he left that, that in the car I, I swear yeah. <laughs> it's... <laughs> uh yeah I do remember it's really funny because I think something some old school type music genre would came out when I was in nursing school and a lot of the the girls in nursing school were asking me like what kind of music I liked and I don't know something played or whatever. And I was like, Oh, this is the kind of music that I like. And I remember it being an LFO song and they, they gave me so much shit for so <laughs> long about being like, liking LFO, but they were giving me shit like in a, in a funny way, not in a, <laughs> you like LFO way. Like it was uh, right. You know, <laughs> they were okay with it type of deal, but there's some of Justin Bieber. I don't mind either. Um, and that's what I don't like to admit to. Well, you know, it's funny. Every, I don't think there's any artist that exists that's like super mainstream that I will just be like, oh, I hate this person because they're mainstream. Yeah. It's, there's always, there's always something that I like in, like, God, what was the Justin Bieber song a friend of mine made me listen to because she really loved the music video? And it was one about, like a breakup or something like probably all his music's about that. I don't know much Justin Bieber, but this song actually was, it was good. It had a really good beat to it. It was like the video was really good as well. And I will tell you, I, I actually judge a lot of songs by how good their music video is. If they have one, like really? you, can, you can have a song that I've never heard of before that people think is the greatest. And if they have a music video that I think is bad, I'm like, this fucking song is stupid. <laughs> and they can have songs that people haven't heard of. And I only know it because I came across the music video and that makes the song. So where the fuck do you see music videos in 2020? YouTube. And they're usually linked to Venmo. Venmo. Oh yeah. Okay. V- yeah, that makes Vimo. sense. <laughs> Vimo, not Venmo. They're usually linked to Venmo. Yeah. They so, want cash. Like, like if you want to know the music videos, just uh, <laughs> yeah. send me some money to Jason 19 on Venmo and I'll, uh, I'll show you where these music videos are at. Uh, Is Venmo used for anything other than fucking like feet pics on Tinder? Like I uh, swear. Yeah, I have, so I, uh, I'm in a lot of fantasy football leagues and people oh, is that are, what they people use people are back and forth between Venmo or PayPal and what they use for that huh. and I only actually got into Venmo because a lot of people were like oh do you take Venmo maybe I should ask them like if they're super into like feet pics and like, that's why yeah. I'm into Venmo. that's the only Venmo. like that and cash app the only time I ever see those two never things never ever heard of anybody who uses cash app so that's probably one for the uh the feet pics yeah like uh there's, there's, like that's a common thing on a Tinder profile. Send me five dollars on Venmo and see what happens. Wait, what? Yeah, really? yeah, that's like that. That's their whole profile. Just send me five bucks, basically. And what happens when you send them five bucks? I don't know. I'm not dumb to try. Most, Probably most take your five nothing. bucks and laugh most at most you. Most likely nothing, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> see what they happens. didn't lie, nothing, you know. They didn't... Sucker. Yep, pretty much. You idiot. <laughs> Uh, now you're out five bucks. That's what happens. <laughs> huh. I was reading a uh, a Reddit thread about this 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 thing uh, one time, and uh, this guy basically said every time he saw a Tinder profile like that, he would send them a Venmo invoice for five bucks. Um, and uh, he said he finally got paid. Basically, he's like, I'm sure they just misclicked, but uh, <laughs> someone finally gave him five bucks. 
<laughs> you send them a Venmo invoice? Like, yeah. this was like arbitrarily sent them an invoice? Yeah, like basically anytime you would see like a Tinder or whatever dating app profile that was like, you know, send me money to this Venmo. Instead, he would invoice them on, at that Venmo. Uh, and uh, eventually one of them actually went through and paid. That's that's pretty funny. But yeah. I So, and I bet you anything, people do this all the time to companies. Do what? They're just invoice them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're probably right. So I, I was watching, um, got really into this guy. Larry Lawton is what his name is at, uh, on YouTube. And he is an ex-con. He was in jail for 12 years. And he got out in like 2007. And now he does this whole YouTube series. But he was trying to do like reform in the jail system because of how mm -hmm. fucked up the criminal justice system is. Ow! And um, his stories are really interesting because he, he just lays it all out there on the line of this is all the shit that I did. This is all the shit that I did wrong. I'll talk about all the crazy shit I did in prison too. Uh, he's like, I didn't. He's like, what got me in prison is what got me in prison. Like it was my own fault. But this system needs reforming and that's what i'm basing this whole platform on so it's really cool like what he's doing but his stories are fucking i watched this whole like series on his he was basically did synopsises of a book that he wrote and it just like sucked me in for hours because it was so off the wall and crazy but either way he's talked about in one of his chapters this guy who worked in one of the offices as his job in prison and he basically found the numbers for the uh, accounts payable to the prison and yeah. set up a, a business on the outside that just invoiced them. And he was the guy that signed the, the checks like for all the invoices that came in. So he signed his own checks to his own freaking like Jesus company. Christ. He ended up getting caught for it later. But how often do you think that shit happens? Oh, I'm sure it happens all the time. Honestly, hell you remember the whole parking lot saga I went through uh, here Yeah, and my lawyer was just like, Send them an invoice. See what happens. So I did, and they paid it. But like, I don't, I don't find it probable that they did the research to even find out well where that invoice came from. So, I feel like they got an invoice and they just paid it. So I pay invoices for my department uh, at my hospital, and I know I I don't pay many invoices, so this is probably why I caught it. But there was this one I, I pay up their iron mark all the time, which is this company that does like, you know, graphics for, you know, forms for like nurses and things like that. And these invoices come every so often. And I know that we do all this work with these graphics, like, you know, with this stuff. So they get paid. And I kept getting this one from Bella Anna Productions. And I was like, I don't know what the hell this is. So the person who does a lot of the work for like downtime forms, I was like, do you have, do, have you worked with this company? Like, do you have any idea who this company is? And they basically said, no, I have no idea. So I just denied it. It went up to my boss who asked me about it. And I was like, I, I have absolutely no idea what this invoice is. So she denied it as well. So then it went up to like, they, they took it far because it was clearly somebody who wanted to get paid for something, but they took it to somebody who they had to have a meeting with me to find out why this invoice wasn't getting paid and what services like we got and if it was a legit invoice and all this stuff. And it turned out it was a legit invoice from some other department that uh. they just had put for some reason my department number on. But I'm telling you, it just like came to me as if it was just mine to be paid. Uh, and it was like, <laughs> like, I could have easily just been like, yep, paid and walked away and like not thought anything of it. Nobody would have thought twice of this invoice right. because it was it was there. And I started wondering, like, if I just sent fucking invoices to businesses, would I just start getting paid like check? Well, you don't know how tempting it's been since that happened for me to just throw them another fucking invoice to the county and be like, well, they pay this one because I don't think that's illegal. Like, I don't know if it is. Uh it I certainly mean, wasn't illegal should, when I did it. You the should first invoice time. them for like something that you could legally go back to and say that you thought you were do like invoice like was for parking. What like, well, was for or for like uh like lawn care for the tire marks, like <laughs> something you have to do because they you know, drove big heavy equipment on your lawn and it's still right. like, costing like you know resodding fees or something like that at this, <laughs> at this point. Like if you you know your sodding fee and just said something like see that what and set it in and see what happens because then if somebody did come back to you and be like this is an illegal invoice you're trying to rip up be like no no no, it's like they, they parked these trucks there and it's still right like, the sod isn't right yet like i'm just invoicing them because <laughs> i'm sure it's illegal in some way shape or form though it's funny it's probably more illegal because you're dealing with a government entity 
Whereas That's it, true. as a private citizen, you know, I've gotten invoices before for shit that I didn't do anything about. And it takes hell to argue with the companies that I didn't render the service that you claim you offered to my, my property. Like this didn't happen. And it's fucking right. oops to jump through to get that stuff relieved. If you can get it relieved. There was a uh, interesting article posted in my discord a couple of days ago about um, DoorDash, and it's kind of like what we're talking about here. Is this the pizza guy? Yeah, okay, yeah. so you've already read this. I read it, and I, I don't, I didn't read it enough. I, I read the, actually, like, more highlights on Reddit about it. Okay. I want to know how he made money, because that's All what right. I'm still so I'll tell, about. I'll tell the story for those that haven't actually heard it, and I'll explain as well. So here's what happened. He's, uh, he's, he's got a pizza company, like you said, mom and pop peeps, pizza's company, pizza company. That's not the name, that's just what it is. Um, I still haven't seen Iron Golem's spot. I'm sitting over here watching, yeah, but I'm, uh, a little, I'm a little worried. I'm gonna get, I want to get this thing set up with hoppers now too, so that if we go away and come back and we mm -hmm. can tell if one spawned. So he started getting bad Yelp reviews about his delivery service, and he's like, I don't fucking offer delivery, so what the hell? And so he did some research and through Google and stuff, and was able to find out how people are getting delivery and it ended up being DoorDash. And he didn't like approve DoorDash or anything like that. Apparently, DoorDash can just say like, "Hey, we'll deliver food." You know, you order through us and then we'll place the order for you and go bring it to your house. Well, whenever DoorDash set up his his pizzas, his pizzas were twenty four dollars basically for this for this pizza. Right. But DoorDash was charging uh, sixteen dollars for so, the same pizza. I will. Did you read the Reddit post about this or did you read a real article? Because I will tell I read you, the, I read an article. I, I got into part of this in the Reddit post that talked about like from other people who have gotten set up. Apparently DoorDash now. You can partner with them and they can give you an iPad that tells you when like their uh, orders from their service come in. Or if you don't do that, they will just apparently set up this stuff for you. Um, and they will, without your quote unquote knowledge or understanding, they're, apparently they're allowed to do this. They take the orders and then they, they have an API that puts them in automatically onto like your site. Right. Or they call in the orders. So you don't even know they came from DoorDash. Right. Exactly. There's just someone showing up, picking up orders. Meanwhile, they're just like an Uber driver, basically, but a right. DoorDash driver. Right. And you have no idea. You should assume, hey, this lady that just say loves our place. She's coming in like three times a day even. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. So this is this, that's, that's basically what they had done with this guy's pizza shop. He had no idea. DoorDash had set this shit up. And what they they basically either they failed to put the pizza toppings into the app or it almost sounded like they're purposely charging less to almost get people to use DoorDash to order the food because it's, you like get a discount like if you order it through DoorDash, basically, um, because it's all the, the you know, part of the article also said that DoorDash has lost four hundred and fifty million dollars last year trying to expand and they're just, they just have unlimited money and they're just blowing it um, trying to get people to use their service. And put others out of business. Um, so basically, he could order a pizza for sixteen dollars, but it was a twenty-four dollar pizza. So on every order, DoorDash was giving him twenty-four dollars and charging him sixteen. But DoorDash is taking a part of that profit. Like that's the thing that doesn't make sense. Is I don't think DoorDash is. Well, you still in order for DoorDash to order the pizza on his website had to pay him twenty-four dollars. I thought they had to pay him 16 because he was charging 16 no. and DoorDash was... No, he was charging, charging 24. They were charging 16. Oh, oh, all the ones I heard were the other way around. It was where DoorDash would set up a menu that had higher prices and try to drive people there due to their exposure. And they would just take, like, the businesses who didn't agree to DoorDash, they would just order it themselves and pocket the difference because they were charging more money. Ah, uh, well, that was not the case with his. With his, he charged twenty four. They charged sixteen. So he would just sit there and order a hundred pizzas for a hundred and you know sixty dollars, or ten pizzas for one hundred sixty dollars, um, and uh, they would pay him two hundred forty dollars. Interesting. Um, I mean, if, so, that, if that happened, I'm yeah. Apparently, there's nothing legal about it. Ill illegal about it. Yeah. So, like, if if I read the thing is. If I read the Reddit post correctly and the person who summed up the article stated it correctly in the Reddit post about it, the quote was the best quote I've ever seen. And the guy said something like, I don't know if this is ethical, but fuck DoorDash. Yeah, that's that is that is a direct quote, yeah. That was awesome. Um Yeah, yeah, it's probably not ethical, but yeah. 
Fuck DoorDash. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I'm on well, board with this. And we talked about this a little bit in a different episode uh, where – and I'm still under the opinion and I, I still don't get it because this, what you just said, goes contrary to even what I read in that Reddit post about people's experience with DoorDash, um, like business owners' experience with DoorDash, as well as just the concept in general. I'm still not quite understanding how they can take – how it costs them so much money to work with these companies. Like something seems, and a lot of people are going to be like, that's why you're not supposed to use these companies because it's something is so wrong with it. And I get that because what I'm saying is it sounds so wrong, but I don't understand how that can happen. Which part? Just how they can be taking so much money from businesses. Uh, like without them having a say in, in some way, because everybody's saying like they don't really have a say. They can do it without their permission. I mean, I guess they're not they're not really taking money from the business because they, they have to pay whatever the business is charging for but, the food. But, but so the business is still making the same but amount. Everybody is saying the opposite of that. They're saying that you're not supposed to order from these places because they're taking away like 70 percent of the profit from these businesses. And that's what I can't figure out. Well, maybe they are if you're partnered with DoorDash. But if you're not partnered with DoorDash, they can't be because they have to pay whatever you're charging. You know what I'm saying? If if like let's say let's say I, you have I, I know Jeff, what you're I know what you're saying, which is why I have a problem following this understanding. I think I don't I don't think I don't think that that means what you thought it meant or they said it wrong or something. Something something uh, something's wrong. Oh, there there's a huge movement of of I'm looking it up. There's a huge movement of people who are basically saying DoorDash, Grubhub, you're supposed to completely stay away from them because they're basically robbing the businesses blind. I don't know about this. All I'm saying, and I'm saying I believe that that's possible in the event that you're partnered with them. Like, oh, I think if you're, I do but I think. The, I do remember the tipping controversy, though, with them. Before. Yeah, that, that, that was, I remember that, that was, too. That was messed up. But what all I'm saying is that if you're not if you're a restaurant that's not partnered with DoorDash, they can't affect your sales in any way except by bringing you new ones, and they may Before bring you, you negative reviews whenever they yeah. fuck your shit up. I hate when I try to look up stuff and I find like what looks like the perfect thing to use, and it's a YouTube video. <laughs> like I can't watch a YouTube video while recording a YouTube video. It doesn't work like right. that. I can't find. I'm gonna have to find something for for the next time we are. Or the, I guess the comments will do it for us because I guarantee there's gonna be people who explain in the comments why these services are bad. Right. I just want to make it clear that I'm talking about the people, the restaurants that are not partnered with DoorDash. Like if this, like this guy that they just did it on their own sort See, of thing. And I want to talk about both because I want to understand. Well, yeah. No, I I do think that those are probably hurting businesses in some way like they're they're definitely taking advantage as, as much as they can to earn money um it's kind of like the whole do some art for me and you can get exposure <laughs> let, let your customers order through here and you'll get more customers you'll sort of thing more exposure. Um, yeah. but anyways we should finish this episode here so leave your comments about this subject and um we'll talk to you next time see ya